Hi, this is Amy Romeo from the jewelry and craft making blog, amyromeo.com. And on this channel, I teach you fun and easy jewelry making and craft projects. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a really cute ice cream cone keychain. And I'm gonna be making it with the Cricut Explore Air 2 because I get so many questions on my channel about whether or not you can cut faux leather with the Explore Air 2. So yes, you can, and I'm gonna show you how to do that today. So if you're ready to get started, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to make this super cute keychain. Let's go over the tools and materials we'll use to make this project. I'm gonna be using a Cricut Explore Air 2, but you can also make this project with a Cricut Maker. You'll also need a purple strong grip cutting mat, a green standard grip cutting mat, faux leather in the tan color of your choice, glitter iron-on, foil iron-on, blue painter's tape, a heat pressing pad, a Cricut Easy Press Mini or an Easy Press, a small piece of Teflon sheet or parchment paper, some quick hold glue or other fabric glue, a weeding tool, a key ring, a jump ring, two pairs of pliers, and an optional tassel. And I'll link to all these items in the description box below for you. So before we get started, I just want to show you, if you're using the Explore Air 2 like I am, you're going to want to turn your dial to the custom setting. All three of the materials we're going to use are going to cut with the custom setting. If you're using a Cricut Maker, then you don't have to worry about this and you can just move on to the next step in Cricut Design Space. Now I'm going to show you how to bring the Ice Cream Cone Keychain SVG cut file into Cricut Design Space and get it ready to cut. The um, SVG file is available in my resource library on my blog, amyromeo.com. You'll go to my site and you'll um, sign up to get the password and you'll go into the resource library and download the file folder for this project. Then you'll need to unzip the folder before you can access the file inside and upload it to Cricut Design Space. So once you've done that and you're in Cricut Design Space, you'll click on New Project, Upload, and upload image, and you'll browse for the file. It's gonna be an SVG file, and you'll see the little preview in your window here. You'll save, and then select it, and insert that image onto your canvas. I always like to drag up to the top left-hand corner and then you'll see that this file is gonna cut from three different materials. One for the ice cream cone scoop, one for the crisscross pattern of the cone, and then the bottom long shape is gonna be the faux leather base for the keychain. So we don't need to make any changes to this file. I'm just gonna go ahead and click make it. And Design Space is gonna sort your three layers into three different mats for you automatically. So the first thing you'll need to do is click on the mirror toggle button for each of these layers. I like to do it right up here at, fr at the front of the project, just so I don't forget. So I've mirrored all three of those. And the first mat that's gonna cut is the crisscross shape. It's gonna cut out a foil iron-on. So what I like to do on this screen is make a note of the size of the foil iron-on piece I'm gonna need to cut these shapes out. So it's gonna be about two inches high and about three inches wide. So I've made a note of that, and I'm gonna hit the Continue button. And the material setting we're gonna be choosing for this first mat is foil iron-on. I already have foil iron-on set as a favorite in my material selections, but if you don't have that, I wanna show you how to get to this material. So you'll click on Browse All Materials, and up here in the search bar, you'll type foil iron-on. Foil iron-on has a hyphen, so remember to include the hyphen or else you won't find the material setting. It'll pop up and you'll click on it. And if you want to add it to your favorites, you can click on this little yellow star here and then done. And that's going to select it as your material. Down here, the pressure setting, I usually leave as default for vinyl and foil iron on, things like that. We don't need any extra pressure for that cut setting. So once we've chosen our material and we've left the pressure at default, I like to come over here and just double check that my mirror setting is on and then we're all ready to send this mat to be cut and we'll prepare our mat next. 
So the first mat that's gonna cut is our iron-on foil, and I've cut it to the size in my mat preview screen. I'm gonna put it shiny side down in the top left corner of my green Cricut cutting mat. Just press down really well on all sides. And then I'll load it into the machine by pressing the double arrows button. And then I'll press the flashing C to start the cut. When the cut's finished, you'll press the double arrow button again to unload the mat and just peel off the foil square. Here's, here it is in a close-up view. So we're gonna use our weeding tool to just pick away all of the foil that we don't want on the back. So I'll zoom in a little, show you how that works. So you just use the sharp tip of your weeding tool to sort of poke out all the little squares in the ice cream cone pattern and then peel away the outside or the excess of the foil from around both of the cone shapes. And that's it. And this is what it looks like once it's weeded. Let me zoom in a little. So you can set that aside and we'll move on to the next cutting mat. So back in Cricut Design Space, we're gonna get the second mat ready to cut. And this is gonna be the faux leather ice cream cone backing for the keychain. So what I like to do is hover my mouse over the mat preview on the left-hand side so I can see what size material I'll need to cut. And I do this because a smaller piece of faux leather taped down to the mat is gonna cut better than a really large piece of faux leather. So I wanna cut it as close as possible to the size. So it looks like we're gonna need a piece of faux leather about two inches wide by seven inches tall. And I'll allow probably about a half an inch of room around all the sides for tape and just to be sure. I'm gonna check that my mirror is on and I'm gonna to need to change my material setting. So from the drop down menu, I'm gonna choose the faux leather paper thin setting. And again, if you don't have faux leather paper thin as a favorite, you'll go to browse all materials, you'll search for it, find it, and then click on it to bring it here. So once I've selected it for faux leather in the pressure setting, I do like to choose the more setting. And that's just my machine. You might wanna make a different choice with your machine once you get some practice cutting faux leather. So once you've selected your material and made a note of your size material you wanna cut and changed your pressure, we're ready to prepare the second mat. For our second mat that's gonna cut from the faux leather, I trimmed a piece just slightly larger than the size in the mat preview screen. It's got a soft felt back and a pretty uh, metallic faux leather front. I'm gonna put it pretty side down in the top left corner of my cutting mat where it was shown in the mat preview screen it was gonna cut from. And I'm gonna press it down really well. And again, it's just slightly larger than the size shown in the mat preview screen. So I have a little room for tape and a little room for error. So using blue painter's tape, I'm gonna tape down all four sides of the faux leather to really secure it to the mat. And I find that cutting a small piece of faux leather like this and taping it down is 99% of the key to success when cutting faux leather with a Cricut. Once I've taped down all the sides and made sure the faux leather is pressed on really well, I'm gonna load it into the Cricut by pressing the double arrows button. And again, you wanna double check that your dial is set to custom and then press the flashing C button to start the cut. So this is the faux leather paper thin setting that we're using, and it's an automatic double cut. So the Cricut will cut your material twice without you having to do anything. And when the machine finishes cutting, I'm gonna show you how I like to double check and make sure that the cut went all the way through. Because if it didn't, you can redo the cut as long as you haven't unloaded your machine. And sometimes with faux leather, you have to do that. You have to cut more than one time. That's just how it is. So I like to use the 
weeding tool to sort of peel up the edge, and this does look like it cut all the way through, but if it had not, before I unload the mat, I can hit the C button again, and it'll repeat the double cut. But in this case, I don't need to, so I'm gonna go ahead and unload the mat and peel out the ice cream cone keychain shape. And you'll wanna sort of peel off any fuzzies. You can use small scissors too to trim off any of these little small edges, but overall it's a, it's a nice cut and we're ready to move on to the next part. And this is how it's gonna look when we put it together. It's just gonna fold over like that. So we're back in Cricut Design Space for the last time to cut the third mat. And I'm gonna check the measurements that we need to cut this glitter iron on looks like we need a piece about two inches tall and a little less than four inches wide my mirror setting is on which is good and i'm going to go up here and change my material setting i'm going to want glitter iron on if you need to be searching for it by browsing all materials make sure you have that little hyphen in there in the word iron on or else you won't find it so i'll click glitter iron on leave the pressure at default and we're ready to prepare the third mat for cutting now to cut our third mat from the glitter iron-on. The front has a shiny transfer sheet and the back is not as shiny. We're gonna put it shiny side down on a green cutting mat, press it down really well, and load it into the machine with the double arrows button. Again, you wanna make sure that your dial is set to custom. And we're gonna press the flashing C button to start the cut. Unload the mat and peel the glitter iron on off of your mat. And this is a pretty simple shape to weed. I'm just gonna sort of pick at it with my nails. I'll use my weeding tool and just sort of get a corner started and peel the excess from around the ice cream cone scoops. And that's it. Now we're ready to assemble our keychain. Now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna assemble the keychain parts. So I've used my little craft scissors and I've trimmed up any little fuzzes around the keychain so that it'll be nice and smooth on the edges. I've got my heat pressing pad and um, my Easy Press Mini on the lowest setting. You could also use a regular Easy Press or you could use a traditional heat press. I would just caution you against using a large traditional heat press because if you press too hard, the pebbling texture on the leather can flatten out. So I really like the Easy Press Mini for projects like this. So the first thing we're gonna do is press our foil iron-on and our glitter iron-on onto the faux leather. Then we're gonna glue the keychain together. I like to press before I glue because if you glue and then the glue inside hasn't completely dried and then you go in with the heat press, the glue underneath will make the faux leather bubble and you don't want to do that. So we'll press first. This is a little piece of Teflon sheet that I've cut to size, but you could also use parchment paper. You just want to use this to protect your surface from your heat press. Um, you, you can use parchment paper, but you don't want to use wax paper. It's only parchment paper or this Teflon sheet, which is really great. So the first thing we're going to do is press down the waffle cone texture. I'm gonna line it up, sort of hold it in place and cover it with the Teflon sheet. And then I'm gonna press gently. I'm pressing, I'm pressing down with a little bit of pressure and just moving it around almost like ironing. I'll do that for maybe eight to 10 seconds. And then I'll double check peel away the carrier sheet. If when you peel away the carrier sheet, the foil starts to lift up, then you can just press it again. Now I'm gonna line up the scoop. Again, kind of hold it in place with your finger so it doesn't move. Cover it with the Teflon sheet and press. You always wanna keep moving around just like ironing, so you're not getting too much heat in one spot. Once we've done that side, we'll flip it over. We'll do the other side. Okay. 
There we go. So now we've got both sides of our keychain pressed and we're ready to glue the two sides together. So the first step you want to do is take your keychain and thread it on so that it's already in place. You don't want to glue this and forget the keychain part. Just kind of double check that it lines up. And I like to have a little piece of scrap paper on my work surface. And I'm going to be using quick hold glue. It's just a regular craft glue. Um, you can also use E6000 or you can use fabric glue, whatever you prefer. So what we're going to want to do is glue just one side and you want to try and get the glue as close as possible to the edge without going over. So I'm going to get the glue all over the back. You want to try and be even, you want to try and get close to the edge. And you want to make sure that you don't get up in this little top part because that's where your keychain is going to sit. You don't want glue in there. So once we've glued one side, we're going to make sure the keychain is out of the way and just fold over and press down. And we'll press down all over. If you get any glue that comes out the side, it's okay. Just wipe it away with your fingers or with a little damp washcloth. And that's what the edge looks like. Now, the key to making this keychain last is now that we've glued it all over and we know we've gotten the glue as close to the edges as we possibly can, we're gonna wanna weight this under something heavy, like a heavy book, at least for a few hours, but really overnight is best. And you'll be amazed at how much it sort of firms up on the edges and that little line disappears and it's going to make your keychain nice and thin and durable. And that's it. There's your ice cream cone keychain. So the last part I want to show you is how to add an optional tassel. If you'd like to, what I'm going to use for the tassel is a nine millimeter jump ring. It's a little hard to see there. And I'm going to use a two and a quarter inch tassel. I got these on Amazon and the jump ring has an opening and I'm going to use two pairs of pliers to open and close the jump ring. With the jump ring it's really important whenever you're opening and closing jump rings that you don't distort the shape of the circle. You basically want to turn it so that it opens but without changing the shape so all you have to do is turn it back and it'll go right back into position. So I'm going to show you how I do that with two pairs of pliers. So these are just flat nose jewelry making pliers. This one is sort of a wider flat nose and this is a narrow flat nose. These are great to have in your jewelry making or crafting arsenal. And I'm going to put the opening is on the top up here. I'm going to hold the pliers one on each side and with just one wrist I'm going to twist up. And all that did was open the jump ring slightly. I'm going to keep holding on with the pliers because it helps me grip. I'm going to put the tassel on and then I'm going to put the keychain on and using the second pair of pliers again I'm just going to reverse the same motion so right back into place just like that. It's important that the jump ring closes correctly obviously so you don't lose your tassel so it might take a little bit of practice or trying a few times to get that jump ring closed but once you do you'll be sure not to lose your tassel and there you go ice cream cone keychain is ready to go. I hope you liked that project. It was really fun to make those ice cream cone keychains. You can use any color glitter ice cream you want. Um, you can use regular colors like vanilla and chocolate. It's really up to you. Also, if you like that project, I do have a video that I'm gonna link to in the description box for ice cream cone earrings. So you might wanna give that project a try as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified when I post more new videos just like this one. And I'll see you in the next video.